Recently, after talking to some colleagues, it occurred to me that not many people out there are up to speed on the age-old firing rate calculation. Whether you're an HVAC technician, energy auditor, or even a HERS rater, you're gonna find this calculation useful when it comes to working with negative pressure gas valves, Energy Star Homes, the ACA QI spec, or even if you just left your manometer at the shop. Hi, I'm Chris Moore with HVAC Pro Blog, and I wanna welcome you back this week where I'm talking about using the age-old firing rate calculation. I know that most inspectors and energy raters avoid attaching a manometer to any gas valve, particularly since in most states, you need a license to do this. But by just simply clocking the gas meter, one can tell the amount of BTUs input for appliances like a furnace, boiler, or even a water heater. The first step in doing this is you wanna turn off all of the gas appliance in the home, including pilot lights. Then you wanna turn the appliance that you're testing to the highest firing rate. Be careful if you're using a two-stage or variable speed furnace or boiler. You want this up to 100%. Once your appliance reaches steady state, that means 10 minutes of steady runtime. You're gonna to wanna to use a stopwatch, I personally like my phone, in order to calculate how long it takes the smallest unit of measure on the gas valve to make one full rotation. Keep in mind, for most houses, this is the half cubic foot dial. Then, to calculate cubic feet per hour, you're gonna multiply 3,600 by the dial size, then divide it by the time it takes in seconds. Now, the next step I'm gonna talk about for natural gas, you're gonna multiply your cubic feet per hour by the value of 1,015 BTUs to get BTUs per hour. Remember, this is the input BTUs per hour not the output. Last step when you're done, make sure you go around and turn on any of those standing pilots that you turn back off. And also remember that can cost you about $20 a year per pilot in order to keep those lit. Now let's check to see if this is what it should be. Based on the ACA QI spec and Energy Star Homes, your results should be within 5% of the rating on the data plate of that piece of equipment. If you're working on a furnace and the technician properly adjusted the manifold pressure and the airflow for that furnace, you should be no more than a couple of a percent off when you do this math. If this is your first time doing this, I wanna give you a few tips. First one, make sure all of your systems that you are not testing are off, and I mean off, pilots and everything. If you're working on a condensing boiler, you need to make sure you know how to override the outdoor reset. Starting and stopping these burners is the least efficient operation for that appliance, and you wanna keep it running at steady state. For a more accurate calculation, you can replace the 1,015 BTUs per hour, the standard for natural gas, to the actual amount of BTUs per hour. You can do this by contacting your local gas company or looking on their website. For instance, it would be really hard to account for elevation. I heard in Denver, they're operating closer to 860 BTUs per hour. Also, to get a more accurate calculation, I'd recommend you time three revolutions of the smallest dial. Then divide that time by three to get a more accurate measurement. If you're working with propane, it actually helps to pipe in temporarily a gas meter in order to measure the input of that gas. I used to have one on my van for a long time and I might've used it once or twice a year. Also, propane is more like 2,500 BTUs per cubic foot. I have to ask and put it down in the comments below, has anyone here actually clocked a digital gas meter yet? I've heard they're out there. We don't see very many in the Northeast. Thanks for joining me this week at HVAC Pro Blog, where we provide advice for residential system design, quality installation, and system diagnosis. I'll see you soon.